Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Here's the News. We got some great stuff for you. It's going to be some Capcom E3 news, uh, some other stuff about how Nintendo pulled a Switch update, and more. So for our first story, I'm going to reference my phone here. Uh, we got a couple times to reference my phone because we have some interesting stuff happening, including something with Sega that's very weird. Uh, but let's first get into the Capcom Showcase. Story. So the Capcom Showcase happens at 4.30 p.m. Central Time on June 14th. We'll be live streaming that and reacting to it. But uh, Capcom went ahead and announced what they're showing. They have about a half hour show, and they're going to have Ace Attorney Chronicles, or I'm sorry, The Great East Attorney Chronicles, uh, Monster Hunter Stories 2, Monster Hunter Rise, and Resident Evil Village. I feel like that might be all they have in this half hour showcase, although there could definitely be some surprises. So this is something obviously we need to pay attention to and see what the heck Capcom is doing. Again, they have one of the shorter showcases, although there's actually another one like Eureka Studio that only has a five minute thing. I feel like it's just a trailer for one game or something. I have no idea. So it is just something to keep in mind that Capcom's obviously going to be at E3 and they're letting us know. Uh, I kind of like when companies let us know what to expect and what not to expect. I uh, kind of like with Ubisoft. If you didn't know, Ubisoft is a preview event where you can expect updates on current games that are out there. So a lot of their, you know, For Honors and stuff like that will probably get uh, some news there. And then maybe even like, you know, Rainbow Six Siege or something. But then, obviously, Ubisoft said their new stuff is going to happen in their actual forward. So Ubisoft almost has a two-hour event because of the pre-show and then the real show. It's kind of weird. I don't know why they call it a pre-show and they'll just have it all be one show. But it is what it is. And it's what's really weird about the day of Ubisoft, which is uh, Saturday. So it's Saturday is a, we have a pre-show to E3's pre-show. That's a pre-show to Ubisoft's pre-show. So we have a pre-show to the pre-show to the pre-show. Yeah, that's something uh, that we just realized yesterday on the podcast. All right, speaking of Sega earlier, our next story comes with Sega because they sent out some strange emails to some fans uh, and all that. And I actually got the access to this email thanks to Sonic Man, the best, one of our uh, mods and followers on Nintendo Prime. In fact, he's also a fellow YouTuber. I'll put a link down in his description, uh, a link down to his channel in the description. Uh, but I'm going to read what Sega sent him because I find this to be really strange. And now it's been independently verified by a number of people to confirm this is real, this isn't spam, this is coming from Sega. Uh, here's what the email says. You're invited to a one-on-one -on -one interview. At Sega, we want to make sure your voice is heard, so we'd like to invite you to participate in a one-on-one -on -one virtual interview to share your ideas and opinions about video games. In return, you'll receive a Sega shop voucher or an Amazon gift card worth $20. Interviews will be held at 2 p.m. Pacific time via Microsoft Teams and will last around 60 minutes. Your feedback will help us make better products and experience for all of our fans. And then an RSVP link. Then it says, interested in RSVPing, player engagement at SegaAmerica.com with your preferred days of the week. If you're selected, we'll follow up with additional details and include a meeting link. Spaces are limited, blah, blah, blah. So what's interesting about this, of course, is that obviously Sega is paying people to give interviews to get feedback. I, I find this fascinating because I don't know why you need to pay people for feedback. I think that's what really confuses me in this. Why would you need to get feedback in this way? It doesn't make any sense to me. Fans will give feedback for free. Nintendo does these uh, polls all the time and they ask for feedback from their fans all the time. They have Nintendo accounts. I don't really understand why Sega feels like we need to pay you and we need to do this in, this team meeting thing over Microsoft Teams. Uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if they use Teams or Zoom or any other app. It, it, Discord even. It, it's confusing to me uh, that they're like, hey, if you're selected, we're going to give you a $20 uh, game voucher or Amazon gift card for spending time with us. Uh, on one hand, that's neat. On the other hand, can you get honest feedback uh, if you're paying the people uh, who are giving you that feedback? That is something that's always interesting. And it's always one of the conundrums in the video game industry when you have uh, companies that might advertise on a YouTube channel or advertise on a website that's also doing a review of the game. People always wonder, is there some tainting there? And while they're reaching out to fans here, and you know, why would fans be tainted in their feedback? Well, if a company's offering you compensation, even small comp compensation, it might lead to you being more willing to uh, be, give favorable opinions when they're supposedly looking for critical feedback i i don't really know maybe it has to do with the sonic presents thing up here which i know this guy is through right now uh roger craig smith is a little bit blown out because the camera's focused on me and not the light from the tv so uh but yeah i don't know i, th I find this whole thing to be absolutely enthralling and fascinating that this is what sega is doing uh but hey you know what at least they're looking for feedback which is better than many other companies 
So interestingly enough, I got this story from Gaming Leaks and Rumor Reddit where they thought this dock and these designs in the background uh, were actually brand new and referencing Breath of the Wild 2. That's actually not the case. It comes from a puzzle design that's publicly available and can be purchased right now. But what's interesting here is that this is a new officially licensed Zelda charging stand for Joy-Cons that obviously have skins on them or something because that Zelda design on those Joy-Cons has never existed, and at least as far as I can remember. And there's tons of skins for Joy-Cons and Switch and all that, especially from companies like Hori. Now, Hori is an officially licensed partner with Nintendo, and these are really cool because it could charge up to four Joy-Cons, uh, and it plugs right into your Switch dock. I find that to be really nice. We're giving away a charging thing to your E3. Look, we got this one right here. This is uh, for Nintendo Switch, four in one mini charging dock this is one we're giving away but this isn't an officially licensed one from nintendo so uh this one's really neat uh it has zelda on it that really excites me uh right now it's coming to japan only i would be shocked if it did not come to the united states i wonder if it's part of the 35th anniversary of uh zelda that they're just you know slowly maybe getting into this year we hope uh, i hope they do something with it uh so yeah hopefully that's what this is and this does eventually come to the united states uh, I think it's really neat. I think it's something I'd be interested just to have laying around as a kind of cool little uh, dock charging situation besides using, obviously, the rails on your Switch, which is the most common way to charge Joy-Con. So, I don't know. You guys let me know uh, what you think about this if you're interested in it. It is 4,380 yen. Obviously, you can't buy it in the U.S. We'll have to see what it costs if it ever and now our last story for the day has to do with the update we talked about yesterday with 12.0.3, which was supposed to fix some errors with Nintendo Switch Online Connectivity that were coming up. Well, Nintendo apparently failed to launch it because it actually removed it before bringing it back today. Uh, what happened is people who updated to it early were seeing their connections completely dropped and blocked entirely. You couldn't even access the eShop. It was kind of nuts. Nintendo's never released an update like this that broke people's Switches so fundamentally uh, when it's trying to actually fix a problem with connectivity. Now it's been obviously fixed and re-released and I have it downloaded and everything's working just fine. I actually just downloaded a game this morning. So everything's cool, but it's one of those situations where, man, Nintendo, you really made a big oopsies. Um, so yeah, at least it's fixed now uh, and we can kind of move on. So I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I am Nintendo Rebel Jans from Nintendo Prime. Hopefully you enjoyed this shorter episode of Here's the News. Uh, it's been kind of rough getting it out today. Uh, it's been a very interesting morning in my household. So I hope that I'll catch you guys later today. I'm hoping to get another video out, but we'll kind of see where the day takes me. All right, folks, I'm Nintendo Rebel Jans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you all in the next video.